I would say the wheel weaves as the, the wheel, wheel wills. wills. And that was is our mantra because right now it's about there's infinite possibilities in the universe and Jordan's universe is infinite. Yes. However, <laughs> we are focused on season two. Hi guys. Um, first of all, thank you so much for bringing me out here. Walking through the sets last night and today, this feels so grand and epic in scope and scale. Can you t talk to me how like this season compares to the first in that capacity? Yeah, I think season one was really focused on meeting the characters and getting to know these young adults who are struggling with, um, you know, the dark forces are coming and it's a big introduction. And I think with season two, we meet our characters and we find them completely scattered. And then we go on these journeys. So therefore, the scope of the show and the world is opened up as we travel and we're in the perspective of each of the characters. So I think it's very special that way. Um, there's a lot more action. There's a lot more danger and um, a, a decision making that I feel like the characters have to struggle through. So there's so much um, that kind of bounces off of the great groundwork that season one has. You brought up a good point about the, um, like the young adult nature of it. One of the changes in the books is that the characters are more mature when we first meet them. Yes. But having seen the beginning of season two, it feels even more serious and more adult. Can you talk about like the, the tone going through season two compared to season one? Yeah, I think um, adding on to what Sana was just saying, I think in, in the first series, um, their, their, their destiny is thrust upon them. They, they are, you know, they're from a small village, the two rivers, and, and then go on this, this journey um, um, with Moraine and with Lan. Season two, we see the characters all establish themselves, themselves as individuals, and we start to see how they are evolving and maturing um, as individuals um, away from each other. And that gives us a chance to explore them in more depth. It gives us a chance to um, meet them and find out who they are a little bit more. So um, that means that there are more environments, more places uh, introduced at the beginning of series two. We see um, Perrin and Loyal off in Arad Daman with the Shinarans. We see Moraine and Lan sort of in hiding, in exile, if you like, in Arafel. And we meet um, a grain and naive in the White Tower working as novices. So we, we were working, I think, four or five separate locations straight from the beginning of series two. And Rand is on his own journey as well there. But that, that's another good point. There are, the characters are on their own journeys. In addition to that, we are seeing new locations. On top of that, there's more factions and characters joining the fray. How do you organize and choose to focus who and which storylines get the most screen time at any given time? I think that is really where the scripts come in. We have a great showrunner, Rafe Judkins, and the writing team. So they kind of like hone in on that from on the script level. But then we have the editorial process where it can really balance out um, the focus and um, the sequences. What I do love about season two, and I feel like you can see in the performances, is that we really are intimate with the actors and the performances, but at the same time, we have the scope of the worlds that we're bringing in. We keep bringing in all these different Jordan worlds that our characters have to encounter. So it's about finding the fine balance between the large scope and not getting lost in that, but also what we believe on the show is really sticking to character and being true to that above anything else. Speaking of characters, uh, one of the standouts for me is Naniv, who's, who's incredibly powerful but trying to still find her place. I was curious about how much we get to explore how powerful she really is in her, in her journey this season. I think um, we will find how powerful she is, and, but she has to know it unto herself. I think it's about recognizing that within herself. She will have to face her fears in the arches, um, and that is going to be something where I feel like it's so relatable to today and what young adults go through today is about facing your fears, about conquering that and moving forward. And I think that's something what I love about her character and Zoe Robbins does such a great job doing this is this, the complexity of also being a little, you know, not sure about the Aes Sedai. She's not trusting everything just because she just doesn't follow. She thinks things through. In terms of 
picking and choosing and organizing which threads or elements from the books to bring in. By the end of season two, are we sort of gone through books one through three? Is that a fair sort of assessment? I would say that we use the books, and I know, um, and I'm not trying to speak for the writers and for Rafe, but the, the books are a blueprint, right. and it's a world. And um, the stories, art is about interpretation of course. and having the freedom to interpret how we want to, and that works for the characters. And that's what's so thrilling about taking such large works, such as you know the 14 books of, of Jordan and being able to have that as our playground. I mean, I think that is what's so special. You mentioned 14 books, which is an astronomical <laughs> number to think about. And we're in season two, of course, but it seems to be getting bigger. How far do you think this can go? Is it realistic to presume, and this is presumptuous, that to say like, hey, we're gonna be pulling threads from books 10, nine in the future. Can Is it realistic to assume that the whole story can be adapted in live action? I would say the wheel weaves as the, the wheel, wheel wills. wills. And that was is our mantra because right now it's about, there's infinite possibilities in the universe and Jordan's universe is infinite. Yes. However, <laughs> we are focused on season two. Given what we talked about, how big this is and how many characters are involved, what are some of the biggest challenges in like realizing this in season two? Coming to the show fresh at the top of season two, um, well, you can see the scale of it. You can see the, the production level and the, and the sets themselves. Um, it, I, it can be quite daunting to come into a show of that scale, but the team here, um, the production designer, Andre Nekvasil, the, the support team for us, Justin Gilmer, Dave Hill, Rafe Judkins are really generous collaborators and they really bring you into a kind of family feeling. Um, so there's an incredible support from those guys. And then also I'd really like to speak about the company of actors. They're an incredibly uh, generous group of actors. They work together, have worked together through challenges through in, on series one and then series two, it really felt like uh, there's a, an incredible rapport and camaraderie between the actors on set and off set. So when you come in as a director, they, they're they really trying to make you feel like you're part of that team, um, which helps enormously with the scale of it because there is no, there are no pauses in your day when you're working on a show of, like this. It's, it's really busy, it's very challenging and quite stressful at times. So, you know, the work is demanding for sure. Since season one came out, like uh, the streaming landscape has changed. There's more, bigger, serious takes on, on, on the genre. We see it from House of the Dragon to Rings of Power and this. Does, does the changing landscape, the bigger competition, I suppose, and I guess also fan feedback, does that alter much going into season two? Briefly, I would mm -hmm. say, I think it's just a really exciting time to be in the genre. You know, the, mm -hmm. to see the work that's being produced uh, by, um, you know, by other companies is just adds to the kind of excitement of working on this show. It means that the, the bar is high um, and the expectation of the audience is high. Um, but in truth, Robert Jordan is a universe all on his own, 5,400 5, named characters across those 14 <laughs> books. This is not a small world, um, yeah. and our focus is truly on Wheel of Time and making these books come to life and these scripts come to life as, as best we can, yeah. And you can only be authentic to your baby and really making the best um, prod product that you can, and then we put it out in the world. So it's it's not about comparisons. I think because of the high fantasy realm, people always bring in all these other shows, but the truth of the matter is there are a lot of dramas, there are a lot of cop shows, there are a lot of different types of shows that you can watch, comedies, and there's, you know, different. And that's the whole point is being able to, I think we're in a time in the world where we want to be able to escape what is happening now, our reality. And I think this, these type of shows and the Wheel of Time is a place where you can kind of put your troubles away and just like watch and kind of go into the world of Robert Jordan. And for my last question for both of you, what are you personally most excited for fans to see once season two drops? I'm really excited for the fans to see what the characters are going through and where they go. We shot all over the Czech Republic, little parts of Italy, as well as Morocco in the Sahara Desert. So you will be able to see the actors and our, and you know the characters and these worlds. And we were contending with the elements. So I just want them to enjoy um, the plethora of imagery as well as um, the performances. 
Um, I think there's a lot of new uh, blood on the show uh, in series two. There's a lot of new talent come in. Uh, Sharon Gillum to do costume design, Davina Lamont to do hair and makeup, um, new directors, obviously, and then amazing new cast coming in. So Mira Sayal comes in as Varin. Uh, Gary Beadle comes in as Elias. Rima Tawiyata comes in as Sheriam. And Natasha O'Keefe comes in as Celine, to name but a few. There are a lot, there's a lot of new, yeah. very significant cast coming into this show. We have an invading army uh, coming in that we've seen at the end of series one, the Sanchez. So that, that, that plays out through series two. That's a new threat to the kingdom. Um, and yeah, there's so much. It's actually hard to pick something <laughs> to say, you know, we're particularly excited about that. But just, you know, the characters are evolving and now maturing into the, the problems that they face. And I think seeing that evolution is really what the show's about.